Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring Kita Edition! I gotta talk to Ronnie. I forgot to last time that she had an option here. Let us speak of the past a while. I was once an Imperian of the demigods. Only I, Mikola, and Melania could claim that title. Each of us was chosen by our own two fingers as a candidate to succeed Queen Marika, to become the new god of the coming age, which is when I received Blythe, in the form of a vassal tailored for an Imperian. But I would not acquiesce to the two fingers. I stole the rune of death, slew mine own Imperian flesh, casting it away. I would not be controlled by that thing. The Two Fingers and I have been cursing each other ever since. And the Baleful Shadows are their assassins. I turned my back on the Two Fingers. The Baleful sh Okay, so a whole lot here. Um, I'm going to start going forward while I talk about it. Melania, um, sorry not Melania, uh, Ronnie is one of the few Empyreans. And that's a pretty big note as only... The only other ones are Mikola and Melania, who were both born of Radigan and um, Merica, who, which is essentially the same person, right? So, um, yeah, that's like pretty, pretty important note, I think, um, as that's kind of led to the theories that it could be that you have to have been born in Merica in order to be an Empyrean, and an, a candidate to be Empyrean. Um, well, yeah, like, that is only of her, is the theory, I should say. Because, Merrick and Radigan are the same, so, essentially, and I th I'm pretty positive that's the case. Like, I don't, I, I think they, they have a split personality, but I think they, I don't think they're two people, separate people at all. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind eventually. Anyways, if those two are coming together, made Mikola and Melania, and the Mikola and Melania are both candidates, but nobody else is, it just makes it seem like, okay, why would Radon not be? Why would Godric not be? Why would Godwin not be? Why would, um, Rykard not be? And that's really the only other similarity so it's like why Ronnie then so that's led to theories that perhaps um, Ronnie was born of the amber egg that was gifted to her by Radigan and uh, it's not actually technically Renala's daughter or there's something else going on with that amber egg so interesting theory for sure I think I already explored this far part but I'm gonna do it one more time uh, so that's the first part of that with regarding Ronnie uh, the other thing is just her casting aside the two fingers and deciding that she wouldn't be controlled by it. And it's basically her going against the greater will. Um, and that's... She'll talk a little bit more about what she wants later on in this quest line. But now we just know that she doesn't agree with the two fingers. She doesn't want to be the, uh, or the greater will. And she doesn't want to feel like she's a pawn of them and just doing whatever they say. Um, like... America essentially is in a lot of ways and probably Radigan as well and look at all those snails up there ready to ambush me Even though there's no item that I got for you to attack me over It's just a big old snail bush And yeah uh, Someone asked if I could do by the way YouTube premiere for one of these so everyone could kind of participate in a live chat together and talk about theories and discussions together I've never done a YouTube premiere, so let me know if that's something that you guys would want and find fun, or if you just prefer it as is, because, I mean, obviously, you can still watch the video. I've never done a YouTube premiere. I guess I like being able to read all the comments afterwards, so, uh, especially so I can, like, look over them and reference them. So as long as that's something I can still do anyways is look over the live chat comments, then I don't really mind it otherwise. But it's just whatever you guys think would be more fun. So, yeah, I'd be curious to hear all of your thoughts on that. Smithing Stone 6 and more ambushes of these crystal snails. 
Uh, I have some comments loaded up, but I have to go through it. Um, so, maybe I'll do what I've been doing typically where I like... You know, load up a... Pause for a moment to load up a comment and then respond to it and that sort of thing. I love, I love getting through this without needing to do anything. Oh, this knocks the guy survive. Okay. You know what? That's fine. I need to heal though. Because this is a pretty easy area and it's way easier than what I'm about to get to. So if I die here, that's just going to be kind of sad. Kind of sad, I say. Get out of here, you silver tears that have lightning. I need to load up a comment. So I have more things to talk about. Okay, let me kill this one and then I'll do that. Ooh, you dropped an item? Oh, nice. Silver tear husk? Oh my. Alright, load up a comment. Okay, from Haitani. I also saw it like that about the Mask of Confidence, that they all had to be quiet about Radigan's little secret. But would that mean Renala also knew about it? The Sculptor sure did. Also about the Godskin gear, it mentions Crucible, the Erdtree, in its primordial form. I'm not quite sure what to make of this. Is the primordial form of the Erdtree like a Crucible Knight? Or do they talk about an actual Crucible here like a smelting pot? Um, from Elizabeth, that's a damn good question about the Crucible. So I read the Crucible, the Erdtree, in its primordial form. As saying the crucible is the Ur tree, not unlike how a tadpole is a frog or a caterpillar is a butterfly. Also concur that the mass confidence was Radigan telling the folks to, uh, close to him, Renala, to shut up about him being Merica. As whether or not Renala knew, well, we know that she fell apart when Radigan left, meaning that it's not impossible that she was blinded by love. She's also a skilled sorcerer, so how could so how couldn't she find out the secret? Either love struck or not, she's as skilled as we think. She's not as skilled as we think, or is in on the whole thing. Yeah, I mean. That, that is what it seems like, right? That the Mask of Confidence is just to keep his big secret quiet so people around him knew it. Which, again, for me, is just another thing of, like, Radigan has got to be Merica. I, the Mask of Confidence and the fact that the Sculptor knew and everything like that just gives me more, like, it has to be the case. Merica probably just wasn't in the capital at the time. Maybe Godwin was ruling over the capital um, while Merica was, you know hanging out as Radigan with Renala. Something else, too, I finally found the item description. I don't remember what it was on, that there was a first and second Lyurnian War, which is something that I thought, but I'd forgotten where I read it, so I wasn't sure until I finally reread it. Which, again, leads to me thinking that... And Radigan, uh, to this item description, it makes it sound like Radigan was a part of both of them. Which is, again, why, to me, it seems like Radigan... Specifically married Merica this, or sorry, Radigan specifically married Renala the second time because he was again failing in his battle against Lyurnia. So it's like if you can't beat him, join him. And then Renala ended up falling in love, but I don't know if Radigan ever truly did. I feel like for Radigan slash Merica, it was just a political alliance because she was trying to spread the the greater will to everywhere in every aspect of everything. So. Uh, that's my thought process on it. Regarding those two. Sorry we're not talking about too much about Nox or Nox Stella stuff right now. Which is where I'm at, but... Comments are more interesting than me. At the moment. Get out of here. Get out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Wah! Wah! Okay. I don't actually think there's really anything up here either. I'm just exploring for the sake of exploring it. Um, well, we certainly have a crumbled up ruin. Another spot for me to pause and grab a, another comment to talk about. From Mad Danny West, pretty sure Ronnie's real name is just Ronnie because Morgat refers to her as the Lunar Princess Ronnie. Uh, yeah, okay, so... I think I talked about, and as for Ron, this is from Hitani. Uh, well, I'll get that to that later. As far as Ronnie goes and Rena, um, I think I figured that out to the second half of the last video, where I was thinking like, oh, maybe 
Ronnie's the fake name, or Rena's the fake name. I'm trying to figure out which one was the fake name. I just got an item. Is that right? Wait, did I read the item? Oh, there's just a gold centipede in here. That's all it is. Um, wait, what's... Oh, it's just the chandelier. Ooh. Wait, are those bones on it? I gotta look at these things. Nah, they're like flower petals. Um... Yeah, I kind of realized later on that, according to Warmaster EG and the fact that Blive and all them, all the people who know Ronnie refer to her as Ronnie, makes it seem like that has to be her real name. The interesting thing to me was more of like Rena and um, where Rena came from. If Rena is in fact the name of the Snow Witch, and also the fact that Rena's, if that is the case, that Rena's the Snow Witch. Why is her name so similar? Hey, look, it's one of those Night Maidens. How cool, how cool is that? All right. As Ronnie, this is from Haitani. As for Ronnie and Rena, as far as I understood it, Ronnie was born in Empyrean and raised in Karius since Radigan left. The Snow Witch she met became her secret mentor. I'm not 100% sure if it is ever mentioned that the Snow Witch's name is Rena, uh, but I think it is. I don't think it is, but you guys could correct me. Since Ronnie doesn't like herself being an Empyrean, she maybe wants to be somebody else so much that she took the name of her mentor and, and even ripped her soul from her body to start living in a doll's body that is modeled after the Snow Witch. Maybe she called that Rena's Rise Tower like that as a tribute to her mentor. And I was I was kind of thinking that with Rena's Rise. Also, there's the Ice Crest Shield mentions it belonged to a Karian princess. Also, also the YouTube channel Mad Luigi recently did a video about Torrent. Ronnie mentions that she know knows Torrent's former master and that the Wraith Collar enemies in Lyrnia also have four arms, just like the doll, which was modeled after Ronnie. Um, for Ronnie knowing Torrent's former, I, I've also heard the theory with Ronnie's former mentor. That that would be uh, Mel Melina. So, and I'm trying to remember why that theory was it. Oh, because of the shadow. Um, because the fact that you get um, you get like the wolf ashes with it, and um, various wolves are shadows. Uh, this could have been a body theory, um, but wolves are kind of like the shadows of various characters. Um, so the fact that you get shadows with, the, like, the Baleful Shadow... Uh, not Baleful Shadows, what do you get? That's what we were just talking about. You get the wolves, the the Lone Wolf Ashes, when you also get... Which also belong to this former owner. So, like, those wolves could have been who were following Melina, was kind of th that theory. Uh, I don't know if I buy it. I'm not sure. It's just uh, stuff that I still have to really look into. And your thought is also just as interesting to me. Um, but yeah, I really... I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, and Mad Luigi's theory, I should say. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Rena is ever... The Ice Witch is ever referred to as Rena specifically. I don't think they ever say that. But just given the name and how similar it is to Renala, that's what, to me, made me think, like, oh, maybe Rena could be the daughter a daughter of Renala, maybe a daughter of Renala that wasn't through Radigan. Come on, do the critical. Do the critical. You didn't do the critical. You did not do it. Rude. Man, this area is like... <laughs> I feel like I'm not doing much of anything. I'm kind of just like cruising through, not really getting any items. This area is going to have those ants that I had trouble with before with the giant heads but it looks like I do more damage to them this time unless they're blocking with their giant heads okay you and your giant ooh oh that's a ton of damage to me actually yeah I like how they're just like trying to avoid me getting to their back by any means possible it's good that's what they would do No. Bad ant. Bad. Using your head like a shield. Bad. Alright. I think this area is pretty fully explored. I mean, I saw... I just see more things. I mean, like, I saw the... Nox warrior riding the another ant. Ah! Well, 
I'm sure this is just an FP flask heal, but I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. And it was. Okay. Hey, look, an item. I think all I've been getting have been materials. I don't think there's anything I got that I had to, like, read into yet this episode. Celestial Dew, which, I mean, I've been getting a lot of Celestial Dew. This is the second one now. All right. Uh, anything else here? It's not looking like it. I mean, I did see the guy, the, sorry, the lady over here riding her aunt, but nothing really matters. Yeah, I got that item, I'm sure. Whatever, let's just go down. Oh, here it is. Here's the guard. Oh, I only hit the ant. I'm sorry about that ant. She didn't deserve it. It was your master's fault. Okay. This area, top part, taken care of. Which means time for me to look at another comment. From Yuki Desato RS. Ever since I talked about the cocoon and their implications in Japanese culture, I've thought this about Rani. I think that Rani is not Renala's actual daughter. I think it is clear that she is Radigan's daughter. This is something we were actually just talking about. But maybe she is like Melania and Mikola in that she is born from Radigan slash Merica alone. In the case of Rani, I do not know if she was born from the Radigan half or the two of the two or from both Merica and Radigan. But the fact that she is an Imperium is the proof. Just like how the real life cuckoo chick is a parasite pushes out the actual egg from the nest of its new mother, did Rani do something similar to Renala? A few counter different arguments be made. Renala could have always had problems with giving birth to a new child, so the Amber Egg and Rani could have been gifted from Radigan to ease Renala's mind. Another thing is how Empyreans are qualified as such. While Millennia and Mikola could be due to the pure blood, could it also be that the murder of the Godwin caused Rani to be a full Empyrean? Uh, no, she was an Empyrean beforehand, before the murder. She actually murdered um, the two fingers to get out of her fate. Uh, that which we were just finding out about. Uh, then, being the other two half Empyreans can make a whole. If that is the case, then Ronnie could still very well be Renault's true child. Jeremy Scott says, I have sort of passively speculated that Amber Egg is what is left of Radigan's true parting gift to Renala, Ronnie. This might explain why the rune is now of the unborn and why Ronnie would be born of one god and be considered an Empyrean. So, good stuff, guys. Thank you. Um, and I'm sure reading this is also helping me when I was talking about this earlier, just like internally, because I read this before. All right, Ronnie, what you got to say? When I turned my back upon the two fingers, Blythe remained my loyal ally. <laughs> Though he was created a vassal for an Empyrean, he was a colossal failure on the part of the two fingers, Blythe and E.G. both. Art willing to give too much to me. Yet, they both understand what lieth beyond the dark path, that I must betray everything and rid the world of what came before. Ah. Should I add thee to the list? Another one, kind of heart. As kind of heart as they. I still don't understand why she said that, like, you betrayed me sort of thing and you're terrible when we literally are the ones who helped her earlier. Which, again, is adding to my confusion, because that feels like a really important line. But, yeah, so... This was the other thing I forgot to mention about Blive. This is why EG was acting weird about Blive and locked him away, is because he was afraid that Blive was going to turn on Ronnie at some point, since uh, Blive was essentially made specifically to keep Ronnie in line uh, and keep her, like, following the orders of the Two Fingers. This form hath loosened my tongue. I've let slip too much. Forget what thou's heard. Forget. But I can't. <sighs> I've let slip. Forget what... I can't not. I totally forgot how much I needed to level up. I guess I'll check. Oh, how about that? Um, let's go with another strength. I should probably actually start leveling up some endurance too so I can wear some other things. I don't think there's anything in here except for a fight, but down here, but um, you know what? I'll take a look anyways. I'll take a look-see over here. I 
And that's where I need to head. Um, yeah. I think that's actually up there is exactly where the boss fight was. Yeah, that's the boss fight from way earlier with the giant dragonkin warrior. So now we're getting the bottom view of it. So I guess before I was looking down at that Night Maiden, so I guess I was started above where that is and went below it. So that's why I was able to see the top part of that Maiden. All right, uh, cool. Let's keep going this way into my favorite area. Get your death out here. Smithing stone four. Oh god, I'm actually almost dead. Okay. There we go. And I know I saw one more somewhere over here. There it is. Gotta get rid of you. You who? Smithing stone five. And a lot more dead bodies. I thought the shadow fight was right there. Is it gonna be here? Oh, here it is. Alright. Well, you see that this baleful oh, shadow, shadow is... Thou art the last. Tell the two fingers that Rani the witch cometh. Drend thy flesh with a fateful wound ne'er to heal. Clearly, uh, she's talking about using that item that we got for her, but again, I'm not sure how she initially destroyed her two fingers. And the Baleful Shadow, as you can see, is basically Blive. So, it's interesting that there's multiple Baleful Shadows, and I wonder if they all look like, sort of like a Blive. But, because this is the last one. Um, but yeah, so, I, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't totally get what's going on with this Baleful Shadow compared to Blive, because... Killing this also does affect Blythe, as we'll see momentarily. It, like, it feels like a Blythe invasion. Uh, like he finally did succumb to whatever the two fingers are doing to him. Uh, but he also, it's... Yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe that is what the case is right there. Beautifully fought. My thanks. T'was more of a challenge than I envisioned. Now I can finally stand before them. This is farewell, my dear. Tell Blythe and E.G. I love them. I thought that was Blythe. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's look at this discarded key because this is going to be important. A key discarded by Lunar Princess Ronnie alongside her very flesh. Opens a treasure chest passed down to Karian princesses. It is said to be found in the Grand Library of Rhea Lucaria with her mother, Rinala. And I don't think there's actually anything else in here. I think the whole, it's just the battle with uh, the Baleful Shadow. Who looks suspiciously exactly like Blythe. Very suspicious. Oh, it looked like there'd be something here, right? That's not, is that where I came from? No. But, hmm. I actually don't know what's in here. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is this going to take me down or up? Hmm. Maybe this is the right way. But I thought straight ahead was the right way, which is why I'm a little confused. Oh, this is the right way. Ah! Oh, no. Lake of Rot. Oh, no. Oh, no! <laughs> well, at least I have the fast warp now. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward so I can go up here and explore. Okay, well, it turns out I'm an idiot. I was looking at where I came from as the way that I was supposed to go. Doesn't matter, we're gonna go to um, the Grand Library now to use that key. And um, from Trist Gothel, I really like that this playthrough is more like a lore playthrough. I appreciate hearing that. Um, Appenbard says, it's very similar to how EMB did it from the Dark playthrough of Dark Souls. I'm pretty sure that I, me, Mentioned him being an inspiration. Yeah, he was. Um, 
for when I first started doing Let's Plays way back when. So that is, that's honestly, that's a huge compliment to be compared to one of his playthroughs. So thank you. All right, discard the palace key so I could get this. So this is what I just got from her was allowing me to open up this treasure chest that, for the Dark Moon Ring. Uh, let me look at it. It's in Talismans. Wait, it's not in Talismans. I'm stupid. It's because it was a ring, and I was like, in my head, it's a ring. It would be in Talismans. Um, should be in key items. There it is. Ring depicting a leaden full moon. Symbolic of a cold oath, the ring is supposed to give, or supposed to be given by Lunar Princess Rani to her consort. Rani is an Empyrean, meaning her consort would by rights earn the title of Lord. That's me! I'm going to try to be Lord. A warning is engraved within. Whoever thou mayest be, take not the ring from this place. The solitude beyond the night is better mine alone. Whoever thou mayest be, take not the ring from this place. I'm taking it from the place. I'm taking it. So I guess like in that sense, you, I guess I didn't really think about this before, but Merica is probably considered an Empyrean. And then that's why it's not Merica who's the Elden Lord, it was Godfrey. And then after that, it was Radigan who was Elden Lord because, I mean, and then Merica was Empyrean. So that was kind of like at the same time. Two at the same time. Uh, yeah, I was like thinking like, should I go to the rest of Fia's quest line right now? You know what, actually, let's do it. I, th I feel like this is a good break point to go do some more Fia stuff. Might be a nightmare, but whatever. Let's do it. One more thing, uh, Alex Nelson said that apparently there's a couple other lore playthroughs active out there on YouTube if you like this type of content. Alex would definitely recommend Aridens in particular, who mentioned that he was inspired by Ian B and me, apparently, so... A, that is a huge compliment to the fact that someone is actually inspired by me, so I'll have to check out his content, because that's, it's weird. I never, it's, I'm used to being inspired by people, so I never would have thought that I would be the one, so that's cool. But also, I'm just giving that a shout out so people can check out another type of playthrough if they want to. So Aridin is who was mentioned, so check them, check them out if you like this type of content. I'm sure Alex can vouch, so yeah. All right, Fia. I'm gonna go get your curse again. Curse me. Forgot how long the case they hold. Ah. This is the other Hallowbrand. How did you? Oh, my utmost thanks. With this. Godwin can take his rightful place as first of the dead, and claim a second, illustrious life. You are my, our, true champion. And though I can't be of any use to you, can I hold you tight? If only for a moment. Radiant Baldekin's Blessing. Ooh! I will soon lay with Godwin, and it will surely stir within me. The new life of the Golden Prince, and first dead of the demigods, as the rune of those who live in death. Please, do one thing for me. Brandish this child, my rune, and take for yourself the throne. Stay the persecution of those who live in death by becoming... Our Elden Lord. I will soon lay with Godwin to conceive my child, the rune. Brandish my stay the birth by becoming. Okay, thanks, Fia. Hey, so now we have um, Fia's blessing to become Elden Lord. We have Selen's blessing. Not that Selen's really matters. Uh, I th okay, so let's read the Radiant Baldekin Blessing. I think that also is going to give us a curse, potentially, annoyingly. But I, I might just keep it on. Wait, I'm on... Wait, that wasn't the inventory? Where is the Baldekin Blessings? I know they're consumables. There we go. Protection of a hidden temple in the guise of a bedchamber for Radiant Baldekin's Blessing. This blessing is of the utmost rarity. It is said that a deathbed companion will only produce a blessing of this kind for a champion 
but once her in, in her entire life. The sole blessing which she imbues of her own volition. So, that's pretty awesome. I'm using this other one to get it off of me and hopefully get the effect off. Um, before I was talking about Godwin, our buddy, right here. Such a cool shot right there. And the fishtail stuff from D. Jetter. Jester, sorry, D. Jester. The fish bottom is likely to be a chicken slash egg deal until we learn more. Does Godric have a fish bottom because those who live in death are ocean themed? All the ones you hunt are mariner boatmen. Or are the mariners ocean themed because Godric became such uh, when he became one of those who live in death? Jeremy responded, find some sources on America's name. I guess I gotta look that up. That was an interesting thought. I didn't really think about that with the Mariners, so. It's a good thought. Um, Ronos22 says, I always just took Godwin's bizarre form to just be his body, growing and mutating in an inhuman way after his soul's death. I guess that's sort of where I was thinking about it, potentially, but I do like this deeper dive into it. Cy Rainfire says, Godwin being a weird fish man now is so weird. But I guess death really corrupts his body like it's Paul or the Crucible, since that was about bodies having different pieces of things attached. Um, Jeremy Scott says, but we've never been confirmed a real picture of Godwin. We never saw his lower half, and his brothers were cursed and hidden until after the shattering, potentially. Sai says, you might be right. I thought we had seen him in one of the trailers of Cussing showing his death, but don't really get to show his bottom half. Uh, yeah, I guess there is no evidence that he wasn't always like this, but I do like the idea that it could be a Crucible-related thing. Wait a second. I thought she would be asleep right now. You're supposed to be asleep, Fia. Maybe I need to pass time. I'm gonna keep looking at comments then. <laughs> Elizabeth says, um... I don't want your bla Baldicton's blessing. Goodbye, my oh, here dear, we go. But I am satisfied. I choose to lie with Godwin of my own will. Not the remains of one chosen for me. And I will bear a child who will inherit your warmth too. What greater blessing could there be but to be born a deathbed companion? This is goodbye, my dear. But I am sad. I choose to lie with Godwin of and I will who will inherit what greater blessing all right, so makes sense with Fia, the deathbed companion thing. Uh, she's lying with someone in death. That's sort of her whole thing. And apparently we gave her that half of the curse mark, right? And now she has both halves of the curse mark. And that's what she's going to use with Godwin to try to find something greater, essentially, which we'll find out a little bit more about in a moment. But let me first use this other Baldekin blessing that I didn't want to get out of here. No. I might keep that radiant one, though, just for now. Uh, okay, Elizabeth Cassidy is saying, I think the primordial form, primordial form of the Erd Tree is different from the Greater Will's Erd Tree. I think the primordial Erd Tree existed with the Crucible and the Elden Beast. Greater Will took it over, possessed it, suppressing the Crucible, taming the tree, then finally making it glow. Great Tree says, you got a point from Jeremy Scott. Yeah, I mean, I figured that there was this great tree beforehand, and yeah, sort of like um, the Elden, yeah, Elden Beast sort of possessed it, probably. All right, so touch Fia, and we can enter her deathbed dream, which I did this boss fight when I was a way higher level, so I have absolutely no idea how this is going to go, since I was probably OP when I first did this. All right, let's drag him four to sacks. So this is very fitting, because if you recall from the descriptions of... Uh, the attack and everything on uh, Lane Dell. Fortisax is actually the one who Godwin befriended. So, yeah, it's actually like really, really fitting that he's died. Um, it's really fitting that Fortisax would be the dragon that we find in Godwin's dream. Because they're friends, they're bros, and apparently he even came with him in death or something. As from Haitani, as for Godwin, who boy, I was confused when I found him. What's with the fish body, secret merman? Also, the strange head kind of has a clamshell shape. Like the actual face. Um, I should do this now. Like the actual face is the upper shell. And why is the face also in the basement of Stormvale Castle? I think the face, this is my guess with that. I think as the roots of this grow and it's allowed to grow somewhere else, then the face forms again, essentially. 
Uh, but that's my guess. It's like where there's a, like a larger congregation of it, it can kind of form again. All right, let's drag in Fortis Axe. Let's do this again, but this time better, or potentially not. I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't really know Fortis Axe's move set at all. <laughs> so, um, I mean it's. A dragon move set, obviously, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I need torrent, yo. I can't use the torrent. Ugh. You got all your special lich attacks. Ooh. Uh oh, I've got. Yeah, I was like, I see I'm about to get struck. Oh, god. Struck by red lightning. I want to make sure that this episode at least got one boss fight, so I'm glad that we're doing this. Because I think the Lake of Rot's going to take quite some time, so... I, I thought initially, initially I'd be able to go all the way through when I first was doing it, but I forgot how long that first half would take. Which is part of why I wanted to do this first, actually. Hey, hey. Uh-oh, now he's going to do his crazy move that I can't remember, so... Oh! I just have to find the areas to dodge. I think he has another, like, super crazy move. Oh, God. Okay. I got super lucky there. I didn't know what the timing would be on that. Oh, I just realized he's, like, putting death on me, too. The death status effect? I didn't realize that before. That's interesting. That you can... I mean, that... Eh, it's not surprising. It's just... Yeah, it's interesting. If anyone would put a death status effect, I could see it being anybody associated with Godwin in any way. So, very fitting. Alright, there's Lit Dragon Forward Sacks again. Oh, very fitting. Remembrance of the Lich Dragon. Very, very fitting that Lich Dra Forward Sacks would be the one, as that is the dragon that Godwin befriended during the war between the dragons and Landell, who earned, he earned the respect of Dread Forward Sacks. Alright, so, uh, first things first, let's look at this Remembrance, and then you can see Fia over there. So, uh, let's see. Remembrance of the Lich Dragon. Remembrance of Lich Dragon Fortisax hewn into the Erd Tree. After Godwin the Golden became the Prince of Death, the ancient dragon fought long and hard against the death within its companion. Alas, victory is never achieved, and its only reward was corruption. Oh god, I totally did not realize... I forgot about that item description. So apparently, he actually went into Godwin to try to fight against this death corruption, and he ended up becoming a lich dragon, essentially, and got corrupted himself. The Mending Rune. So this is what Theo was trying to create. This is what she wants us to use. She doesn't mind her sacrifice. She wants us to become the Elden Lord and use this Mending Rune. The Mending Rune of the Death Prince. At least I... She might be dead. She might actually just be, like, sleeping or something still, but just given the next thing we're going to see. Rune gestated by Fia, the deathbed companion, used to restore the fractured Elden Ring when brandished by the Elden Lord. So this is one of the endings that we can get in Elden Ring. We have to use this mending rune at the end of the game in order to get an ending. So this is one potential ending now that we've just unlocked. Formed of the two Halibrand half-wheels combined, it will embed the principle of life within death into order. So basically by creating this death rune, She's making it so if you put it into the Elden Ring at the end of the game, you can make this new order of death and spread death as a thing and uh, all the death roots stuff and living within death. At least that's my understanding. Uh, the Golden Order was created by confining death and death. Thus, this new order will be one of death restored. I don't think it's just death restored in the sake of like, you can die. I'm guessing that it would be the sake of like your people living within death, which is exactly what the Golden Order hates. Prince of Death, take a good long look. See the wrath of the Golden Order, the Order's justice writ in blood. This is what's become of your precious witch. Naught but expired meat and bone. This is a proper death, oh Prince. 
Look at this rotten hole. No more children can be got from this useless flesh. Behold, your mother is dead. <laughs> All right, so this is Dee's brother who we gave the armor to. Um, you can see why he'd want this revenge. This is revenge, you witch. And you, you ghoul. This is the wrath of D. Okay. Uh, she dropped Fia's hood so we can look at Fia's set. So this is why I was saying I, I guess she might not have been dead before as D clearly kills her now for good. But let's look at her stuff. So Fia's hood is here. Hood of black cloth that covers the whole head, worn by Fia the deathbed companion on her journey after being exiled from her home. The fabric itself is soft as silk. Um, I guess that's about all we get. All right, let's talk to D. Ah, uh, hello. The rotten witch is dead. The golden order unsullied. Now I can look my brother Darian in the eye. Honeyed rays of gold deliver my spirit. All right, so this is, yeah, us getting it. His brother D's na actual name is Darian. This D's name I'm forgetting, but if you kill Darian, uh, you kill him. He says this D's name. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that, in a way, it is our fault that she died. Uh, because she's sleeping after doing this, or whatever she's doing. Uh, took it all out of her. But then also, beyond that, all of her champions who were protecting her, we killed and took care of. Darian, now I have no regret. Honeyed rays of gold deliver my spirit. Darian, honey. All right, so he has no regrets. Honeyed rays of gold deliver my spirit. Well, that sure sounds like something's gonna happen because you know what happens with honey rays of gold to deliver your spirit. It would seem that he committed suicide. At least that's my guess here. So we get the twin set back. So same as before, but we also get the inseparable sword now. So we can take a look at that one. So let me do order of acquisition. And let's take a look. Sword forged by compounding silver and gold. A sacred weapon to hunt those who live in death and deals holy damage. The inseparable twins found solace in the golden order. The only institution not to revile them as accursed beings. Ah, that's interesting that they're not... Why would they be the only ones who didn't revile them as accursed beings? I mean, they're twins, but I don't know if there's anything else wrong with them. I, I guess the first, this one, we see is actually, like, really pale. Pretty much white. But, um... Yeah, I wonder why. I, I guess that asks more about D. I mean, there's so much twinage stuff going on with the Golden Order. Uh, okay, so, next thing. Let's go the slow way. Back to the Table of Lost Grace, so we can look at the Remembrance. Actually, I want to read this from Haitani before I do this. Uh, they said Ronnie and Godwin got killed at the same time. For Ronnie, only the body died, but the soul lived on. That's why she continues living in a forearm doll. Right. For Godwin, the soul died, but not the body. So is he a zombie now? In the opening cinematic, you see stuff crawling under his skin. Were those the roots, death roots starting to grow? I think it was mentioned he died in Stormvale Castle. So did these roots from his body just continue growing until it reached the underground where you see the find the fish version? I don't think... He died in Stormvale. It's, at least that's never mentioned anywhere that I'm aware of. And I have a feeling that... You know how there's that warp? Um, there's the warp at the bottom by his... Uh, by Fia, where Fia would have been at the Greater Waterfall Crest. My guess is that it warps you right into a, a tomb, essentially. And I think that's probably where he died and was buried or something to that extent. So they probably did start growing from him, but I think it might have been there. I mean, you always have a burial or a tree somewhere at the roots, so they probably would have wanted his burial to be somewhere in the roots of the earth tree itself, or like a main spot, since he was so important. Also, these wavy shapes around the face remind me a lot of Rikard's human face attached to the snake. Is that just some kind of pattern how faces grow on branches, pillar-shaped structures? I don't know. Uh, Elizabeth says, I think the body combined with D, Jester's observation, might be a nod to how life began in the ocean. 
If life began there too, so did death, or some obscure reference to Japanese or Celtic mythology. All right, anyways, uh, let's do this. Let's see, oh yeah, I keep on forgetting about the fat this, but I don't think I've got anything new I can buy, so. Let's see what I can get from the Lich Dragon. Incantation that channels the power of the Ancient Dragon. Four to Sacks. During the War of the Ancient Dragons, these twin red lightning stakes were the hallmark of one ancient dragon who is called the Mightiest Boulder Stone. Which I'm guessing would be four to Sacks. Uh, death Lightning. Incantation that channels the power of the Ancient Dragon. Four to Sacks now corrupted by death. It is said that Golden Lightning was wielded by Godwin, who befriended Fortisax. Or that this Golden Lightning was wielded by Godwin. Um, that's interesting that it was wielded by Godwin, and Fortisax only got it after being corrupted by death. Unless it added the black corruption to it. After death. Alright, and back to the Lake of Rot, where I can at least get it started here. Yeah, and sorry I have so many comments to go over since last time. I missed a bunch. Elizabeth Cassidy corrected me on something from last episode. So the fellow with the outstretched arms who I was talking about, I don't think he was doing a Golden Order totality. He seemed to have a sack of rocks and with the gravity fan. or uh, I think he was worshipping that weird larval outer being. His arms were somewhat bowed. While Golden Order totality appears to be a perfect T-pose. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think you're right. Okay, I'm gonna keep on rolling. I'll, like, bounce back and forth from comments. Oh, actually, there's... I think at this point, I could probably equip... This is critical hits. Let me switch that one. I think I have an item that makes this so rot... Poisoning or rot in vicinity increases attack power. Oh, that's pretty sick. But I think I have something that makes it so I don't... I have more immunity to rot at this point. Let me find out. Okay, you know I'm going to use the Kindred of Rot Exaltation because that sounds kind of fun to have. Um, and then slowly restoring HP. I think greatly raises robustness, immunity, and focus. That might help out with the Rot, so I, I, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I think at my Rot Resistance, you can see that's one of those icons right there. So, I'll do that. And this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> All right, well, first place to start is going to be here. Hey, I got the map of uh, Lake of Rot here. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that says. Key items. My map, the Lake of Rot. A great lake of standing water downstream of the Einsel River. It is said that the divine essence of an outer god is sealed away in this land. All right. And I think at this point I had the entire underground mapped out. And you can actually see a spot down there too. So, and this Lake of Rot is just right underneath the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, interestingly. And I guess this boulder should be part of the Academy that that stands on. Oh, wait. Oh, for a second, I thought I was standing on Rot, and I was like, what am I doing? That is not smart. What I'm realizing is I probably actually have something. I probably have a Physic Bubble that helps with Rot. Uh, boost resistance and heals. You know, you think you would have something that specifically says, like, it protects against rot. Ah, well, whatever. Okay. Um, it's just gonna be fun. That's that's all. It'll be a lot, a lot of fun. Rot grease. I'm gonna get rot. It's gonna be awesome. Just all the rot. Also some death. Uh. I guess at least I'm healing a little bit, so it somewhat counters the effect. Oh, uh, yay. Item over there. Item over everywhere. Alright, let me grab that, and then I'll go for that item. Yeah, the main thing I actually want to do here in the Lake of Rot is there is an item to grab. Uh, by like a little mini boss. I want to at least get that one. Oh, and this. And you. Black Key Bolt. Yeah, and I just raised up that thing. 
Oh man, such a fun, fun area. Thank you, Miyazaki, for your love of poison everything. <laughs> Somber Smithing Stone 7. Alright. I'm doing it, guys. I'm doing it. Okay, I think this is the one that I just got. I just raised some stuff over there, so... Let's keep on trekking the way that we're supposed to trek, just so I can raise as many platforms as possible. That's the real goal here. Warming stone. Get out of here, stone. Wait. Oh my god, I should level up before I... Use it or lose it. Also, if these guys give me death then my my effect I have on doesn't do anything. Alright, I'm gonna get this. And then maybe I'll just warp back. Well, you know what? There is that other one over there that I should probably go ahead and grab. While I'm doing all this stuff. Hey. More platforms. Nice. Oh my god, I'm... Oops. I didn't realize I was so low. I just wanted that right there. Elizabeth Cassidy. So I remember in the previous episode comment section I saw the old discussed as an opposite to the Nox. I don't think there are separate people. Noxtella is a name too on brand for the Nox race. So what I do th so what do I think the old are? Why the ancient dynasty that the Clayman served? Racially they are the Nox and their palace bears their dynasty name. Socially I they might have been different though enough to the Nox, but again, I don't think they were wholly different. Think of how Texans and Minnesotans are both Americans. Uh, and then Jeremy says, I've given it a lot of thought for our last chat, it's the idea that they're descendants of the Onyx Lords. How much water do you think that holds? Uh, nice half of a glass from Elizabeth Cassidy. Alright, uh, let's add some strength again. Wait, I wanted to do endurance. Ah, well, whatever. Alright, we're gonna go this way now. Oh man, gotta get all the items over there too. A Eonian butterfly. I thought it was pronounced Aeoni Aeonian before, but then I looked it up and I think it's actually Eonian. For those. Somber Smithing Stone 8. Oh snap, I'm getting an 8. Uh oh. That's how you know this area is gonna be tougher. Although I think I'm probably well enough prepared. Oh yeah, I wanted to do the rest of the Blive stuff too. So I could finally get that sweet ass. I mean, nothing. Ignore me. I'll probably... Maybe I'll do that um, to finish this off. Uh, that's a whole quest line. So I'll have to think about it. Given the time. The time. Oh. No, I actually don't know if I went to this spot in my personal game. Somber Smithing Stone 7. I guess I don't need to. Although it's still nice. And all right. Let's go ahead and... Hmm. I feel like I'm missing something here. Hey, look. One of those followers. That's weird. What's a follower doing down here? Ah, whatever. Rune 9. I still feel like... Oh, there's the platform I was thinking of that I didn't get before. Yeah, sometimes it just drains so fast I lose track of it with the Scarlet Rot. I want you, platform. You're going to be very helpful to me, I think. Yes. All these are what I need. Because this is a boss fight right here, and that's awesome. Against another one of these guys, but this time while fighting around Scarlet Rot and being poisoned and all that. So, you know, even more fun. Oh, God. Okay. No! Yeah, it's kind of like a, a fight where you just have to stay on this platform, basically, as much as you can. You get used to the uh, timing of everything. Wow, hitting him in his head really wrecks the hell out of him. He's only rolled in the Scarlet Rot. Oh, God. He's doing okay until that. Wow. 
Why is my Scarlet not rot not fully going away? It's been stuck there for a while. Is it because I rolled it? It's like the status effect isn't dropping at all. Or it's just going that slow. Wait, there's a Snake America at this boss fight? I don't remember that. I don't think that happened for me. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Why didn't I get that before? That will make this way better. Because, well, as long as I can prevent myself from it. getting the rot right now. Okay, nice. I'm just going to stay here. I have a nice area to stick around. I guess this is considered a boss. I thought, like, I didn't know if it gave a boss life bar or not. So it does. So I'm going to call it a boss. Oh my god, none of the, none of those hit! That was ridiculous! Right. It makes me not want to ever target again. I cannot believe how ridiculous that was that not a single one of those things hit. Like, I felt pretty good about what I was doing too. Oh my god, come on! I mean like my dodge timing was on point, I was attacking in between. Now he's gonna drag it back, ain't he? Yes, he is. Now. Right, here we go. Let's get that eyeball. I actually find these guys easier than the, uh, than the other dragon guys. Then again, I mean, it's probably just this one specifically. Now that I think about it. Great enemy, eh? Dragon Scale Blade. Cool. What is this? A weapon made by sharpening a gravel stone scale. Thought to be the source of an anci of ancient dragon immortality into an unclouded blade. Alas, the dragon can soldiers never attained immortality and perished as decrepit pale imitations of their skyborn kin. Ooh, dang. Dang, guys. That's not... That's... Got a sting a little bit knowing that. Okay. Well, let's fully explore that ruin to the left. And, you know... Why did that just give an orange, like, green effect? I probably don't have time to do the Blive thing. That's what I get for choosing to go to Fia first. Just what I get. But then again, before I forget, I have all the level stuff here. Right, this is a fun little dangerous nook to go into. Wait, I thought there was a reason to go in here. Now it doesn't seem like there was. I thought you could get an item. Maybe, oh, it's for jumping up top. That's what it is. So, yeah, I gotta do this whole little platformy thing, and it's just a nice surprise of you falling into a pit of those guys. Everyone's favorite kind of surprise. Hey, come on. Ah! Somber Smithing Stone 8. It's actually pretty good. Pretty good reward there. I'll take that. Don't mind if I do. And you know, actually, I think I'm mostly done with this Lake of Rot area. Mostly. Not fully, just mostly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mushroom Crown. I forgot to see where that was. Oh, not even to take out one of them? There we go. I just want one of them taken out. I just want to run to the left here to see if there's any other items I'm forgetting that are just kind of laying around in rot. So I don't have to run in the rot anymore. <laughs> Although, man, my... I am truly running out of Estus. Whatever, tears. Estus tears. Crimson tears. I'm going to cry tears. It's too bad, too, because I'm so close. I'm so close to a site of grace. This doesn't really matter when I use this as long as I get out. All right, you know what? That's that. I got I to gotta warp. <laughs> All right, I think I'll just do a little fast-forward thing here just to run through this part.
you know, I've been thinking about those statues a lot and who they could be, and I felt like I came up with a good theory, and then I forgot. <laughs> it's so frustrating that I totally forgot my theory about it. Oh, well. Say la vie. That's how it goes. Oh, I have still to look at the mushroom head, don't I? Um, you know, I'll do that. I'll do the mushroom head look. Eventually. First, I gotta get this sweet item. What's it gonna be? Nomadic Warrior Cookbook 22. Okay. Mushroom head. All right, I'm gonna go back to fast, fast forward. What? Oh, I have to go further down for the Sight of Grace? Okay, never mind then. I'm gonna go up here first. I might not even make it to the Sight of Grace then. Ah, oh, I for I missed this spot. Oh well. Um, how am I doing? Six more left. I think I should be able to get through here and get rid of my Scarlet Rot. I think. As long as I can climb up to the top of this ladder before I die. You know, it's funny when I first found this or got to this spot, I was going crazy because I was like, "What the?" I, like I couldn't find that side thing to come up here, and I just kept on running around like, "What the hell? What the hell?" Where do I go? How do I get up there? Like, I thought you had to jump, run onto one of the platforms as it lifted you up. Which obviously did not end up being the case. Wait a second, is this an Onyx Lord? This is an Alabaster Lord, isn't it? That's interesting. What are you doing down here, Alabaster Lord? And how is that going to affect all my theories? Alabaster Lord Sword. That's a new thing. Grace are forged from a blue-white meteoric ore, a weapon unique to the Alabaster Lords, a race of ancients with skin of stone who are said to have risen to life when a meteor struck long ago. Yeah, one of them is in an Everjail right by uh, Karia, which has led me to wonder what the relationship really was between Karians and and these guys, especially since, um, well, there's that, but then Radon studied under them in Celia, so... I don't know, just like a lot of a lot of questions, right? Really just makes me question things and did I miss something? I thought I could go over there and it was like an item I could get. Well probably not. It doesn't look like it. I guess it's just another broken pillar. Okay, time for another fast forward. No! Don't give me the rot! Don't give me the rot! No! Four. Four flasks. You gotta get me there. To the sight of grace. That's all I ask of you. I just want this sight of grace. So close, but so far when you're rotting away. Ah! Get it! Get it! All right, nice, perfect. All right, so the Grand, Grand Cloister, Grand Cloister. So next episode, I'm gonna do some Blive things that you'll see, uh, some Karya related Blive stuff, uh, EG, all that. And then I'm gonna go down here and hopefully finish up the Lake of Rot. That's gonna be my goal. I don't think I have anything else left in that Lake of Rot. So yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for joining. I appreciate it and I will see you guys next time. Hey. Later, guys. Peace.